So in this question, we're being asked to work out the magnitude of the reactive element of the overall circuit impedance for the voltage source sh shown here. So what this is really asking us is for this entire impedance that's connected to the source. If we're representing this in complex numbers, the overall impedance is going to be made up of some real part, we'll call it A, and some reactive part, size B. And the question is essentially looking for you to work out the value of the reactive part for this entire impedance. So the approach to doing this involves getting the impedance of each element of the circuit, adding them together because they're in series, and then working out what the overall imaginary part is. Now, this circuit only has inductors and capacitors. So what we are going to see is that there is no real part of the impedance and that the entire impedance is reactive. But we still do the same approach as if there was a resistor in the circuit. And we'll have to step back through it, but what we essentially need to work out, first of all, is what is the impedance of this inductor and you're going to see that that's j times omega l where omega is the frequency in radians per second and l is its inductance given here and we'll also need to work out the impedance of the capacitor which is minus j 1 over omega c where again that's the frequency in radians per second this is the capacitance given here. Now, you'll see that these two values depend on the frequency of the supply. And we're given an expression that breaks down the voltage supply here. And if you go back to our notes on sinusoids, we'll get that this is the amplitude of the sinusoid. This value here represents the phase of the sinusoid. And this value here that multiplies T, this is our frequency in radians per second. So we have all the parts we need now to work out this overall impedance. So let's do that. First, let's get ZL, the impedance of the inductor. So it's J times omega L. That's J times omega L, so that's J multiplied by 1400 pi multiplied by 7.5 by 10 to the minus 3 because it's milli. Let's put that into the calculator on my own end. And again, now that that comes out as 32.99 J ohms, because this is an impedance, so it's ohms. And at this point, I will go and work out the impedance of the capacitor. This is going to be minus J. 1 over omega c. Carry out the same steps here. That would be 1 over omega, it's still 1400 pi. And c in this case is 27 by 10 to the minus 6 farads. I'm going to put this into my calculator here. I'm getting out minus 8.42, so that's the, this value here. The minus comes from the minus j, and we'll just keep the j out here. Now we can get the total impedance. So our total impedance said we add up all of the impedances because they're in series. 
Now we don't have any resistors, so there's no real elements to this. We just add these up here. So we've got 32.99J minus 8.42J. And it's real but real, imaginary but imaginary. But the result I'm getting here on my end is zero for the real part plus 24.56j. You could round that up to 57, I'm actually good. It's not going to make that much of a difference. So this is the total impedance. Now you can see because there's no resistance, that the overall impedance is purely imaginary, purely reactive. And if we go back to the question, is it, we're wondering what is the magnitude of the reactive part of this? And that would be the value there. What we could say here is that the imaginary that part of our total impedance is 24.56. And if you did have a resistor in this circuit, you would see a value show up here in the real part. But we don't for this example. So just remember, if we were to do this again, look at the individual elements. And just as an aside, if we did have a resistor, ZR, its impedance is just its resistance. But again, we don't have that. I need for that in this example. And when you're given the expression for the voltage in this form, in terms of a sinus size parameters, we just have to access the value for the frequency and radiance per second here to get it for this equation. Alternatively, sometimes you could be asked, given the frequency in Hertz, and if you want to get the frequency and radiance per second, you just multiply that by 2 pi 